welcome back to my channel. It is day, I believe today is day 15. Yes, day 15 of the countdown to 2021. Today's gonna be a more serious video instead of my typical unboxing video, but I did promise you guys that I would talk a little bit about the vaccinations coming out for uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 um, and my perspective as a physician especially an ER physician who deals with COVID on a daily basis. Um, so I had previously talked a little bit about vaccines before and I thought it'd be good to go over the information um, and my thoughts on it. So first and foremost, I am going to get the vaccine. Um, I'm in the first group of people that will be vaccinated for this. The US just uh, approved the vaccine, I think it was on Friday, so today is Tuesday. Um, and some of the first places started vaccinating yesterday. Um, so it looks like for my particular institution, we should be vaccinating in the next week. Um, and I'm just waiting to schedule to get my appointment to do that. But they are going to start with the frontline healthcare workers who work in the high risk areas, such as like ICU, ER, uh, or COVID units. So obviously being an ER doctor working in the ER, I'm high risk. Um, and so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I will get my vaccine uh, beginning of next week. So there are a couple of vaccines out there and there's a lot of confusion with the types of vaccines. Um, there are uh, mRNA vaccines, which I'm going to talk a little bit about and how they work. There's also a, an active virus vaccine. Um, the big ones that you hear about in the U.S. are the mRNA vaccines. Um, they are the Pfizer one and there's also the Modera one. Um, and we'll talk about those in a second. Then there are a couple overseas that have already been um, kind of out and about. So you have, I forget the one that from China, what they're calling it, but the one from China is an inactivated uh, virus or a virus carrier. So that's like our old school virus or viruses, our old school vaccines. Um, like you, let me let, let me back up a little bit and explain uh, vaccines in general. So for those that don't have a big understanding or background on vaccines, we have two major types of vaccines that we currently use in medicine in nowadays. So we have the live vaccine and we have an inactivated vaccine or like a particle that they inject. OK, so, for example, polio. Polio is a live vaccine. It's usually given and it has a uh, virus that is inactivated so that it's not gonna give you full polio, but it mimics polio enough that your, your body then um, makes an immune reaction to it and produces antibodies. I think um, typhoid is another one that has a live version of it. These are not good for folks that have a low immune system. So if you're like a cancer patient or on some sort of auto-suppressant auto medications, live uh, virus vaccines are not good uh, because they can potentially overwhelm your immune system and you can get like a uh, potential like conversion to the actual virus or illness. Um, it doesn't happen often, but there are those occasional people that will convert. Let's say they get a polio vaccine, they can convert to a wild version of polio. Not to scare people to get vaccines at all. Um, so we don't give them to pregnant people, immunocompromised folks. Those people, we just don't give that type to. The vast majority of vaccines that you're going to get are an inactivated virus or like a particle or toxin type uh, viral one. So that's basically where they take, for example, for a uh, virus, they'll take an inactivated virus uh, or a part of a virus and inject it into your body makes immune response to that. Or like for tetanus, they, they have a tetanus toxoid on another particle that then your body will make a reaction to. That's the vast majority of our, our vaccinations. Now, um, from what I understand, the vaccine out of China and I think the one out of Russia are both that style. And what we know or what we're seeing from their studies is that that vaccine isn't that great. It's like 65% effective um, in folks that get it. That means 65 65% of the time, it seems to give immunity to folks, but then there's that entire uh, other portion of the people that are still getting COVID from it, so, you know, and it doesn't protect them. So that's not the greatest level that you want. Um, so the two vaccines that we have in the U.S. that are really the front runners, there's a couple other ones that are being worked on, but the Pfizer one is the one that was just approved, and I think the Modera one is going to be approved here shortly. Those are mRNA viruses, or I keep saying viruses, mRNA vaccines. Um, and I have a, like a little a fact sheet about this that I pulled up so I can give you guys a little bit more data. Um, so this is a uh, 
mRNA is a new style of vaccine coming out, but it's not new, new, if that makes sense. Meaning we've been studying mRNA vaccine methods for years. Um, it's kind of what they've been uh, looking at for the SARS um, because of the way it works. Uh, so this technology of mRNA has been around for a long time. We just have never successfully incorporated it into a wide scale vaccine given to people. And this is the first time they've done it. So when people are like, it's a new vaccine technology, I'm really worried. I get it, but this has been around for a while. It's not new in the sense that they've been studying it for many, many years um, before they even began to make the vaccine. So um, mRNA is basically, they package a little nanoparticle, um, a lipid nanoparticle, I'm gonna read this off here so I, I get this right for you guys. So it's a synthesized mRNA packaged into a small lipid nanoparticle, so a little tiny um, particle. And basically what happens is your body, your cell uptakes it, and it is uh, has a little bit of that code that will make your cell produce basically the, the code for the spike protein of the virus. So SARS-CoV-2, which is the name of the COVID-19 virus that causes COVID-19, the disease, um, has these what are called spike proteins on the outside of the virus. That's what we think helps introduce this virus into your cell and causes it to uh, be so... Um, bad in the human body um, and so that's why they've been targeting this spike protein to make the antibodies for because if you can neutralize that spike protein and have your antibodies attack those spike proteins that virus will not get into your cell and start replicating and then cause havoc so the idea is this little particle gets into your cell, your body then produces this copy of this spike protein, but not the entire virus. This is not a live virus and creates a reaction just to that spike protein. So then you have a very robust immune response if that spike protein or any part of that virus with the spike protein gets in your body. Um, the 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 So far, the data from the vaccine trials have been very good. Uh, they they have found that you have to give two doses of this mRNA um, vaccine to get a good effectiveness. And it, I was reading the data here, and it looks like after the first vaccine, there's like a 55 or 60% effectiveness rate. And then with two, it looks about 95%. They did a big random, randomized controlled trial, meaning they looked at many, many people over a lot of different demographics. They started at age 16 and worked their way up. And they did a really good uh, job of partitioning out the groups, keeping everything equal, um, looking at different patient populations and then kind of following out the adverse events. Um, so just for a safety standpoint, they found that it was 95% effective. So uh, when they went through, I'm just going to give you some of the data here for those that are uh, data driven. Uh, they had 43,000, over 43,000 people over 16 who went into this trial and they were randomized uh, to either a placebo or to the actual vaccine. And those folks were blinded, meaning they did not know which one they got. And they did 152 sites worldwide. So um, the vast majority were in the US, but they had Argentina, Brazil, South Africa, Germany, and Turkey. Um, and they um, gave it to a total of 37,000 people actually uh, fully completed the, the trial. And then they did two sets of uh, vaccines and they followed people out. So they looked at things like adverse reactions. So if one of the examples is uh, adverse reaction would be mild to moderate pain at the injection site, flu-like symptoms, so like chills, body aches, fatigue, headache. Um, and what they found is the most commonly reported symptoms or effects that they found were kind of these like flu, like fatigue, headache, um, and they found with the uh, vaccinated, about 50% after the second dose had some sort of these symptoms. So you, when you get this vaccine, you will have a good shot of having some sort of like either local reaction or like a kind of body ache, tiredness, headache. But interesting to know, and this is why I always like looking at the data, about 23 to 24% of the placebo, the people that got no vaccine, they just got water or saline or whatever they injected, had the same symptoms. So I don't know how much of that is psychological. People are like, oh, I think I got the vaccine. I have chills. It's got to be the vaccine. 
I just thought that was very interesting. Um, so what they found is that the uh, frequency of the adverse reactions were worse after the second dose. That makes sense. Your first dose, you may or may not have a reaction from your body. Uh, but your second dose, you should be primed and your body should be more apt to make uh, antibodies. And so you're going to get more likely a reaction or a systemic effect where you feel like chills or a headache. Um, they also showed that uh, they had four serious events uh, in the uh, vaccinated ones and two in the uh, that died from it in the vaccinated trial, but what they found is they didn't think any of these adverse events actually had to do with the vaccine. Um, of note, four died in the placebo group. So that tells you right there, statistically, there's there's no real mortality related to the vaccine. That was a big thing. Um, so it looks very safe. It looks like there are some mild side effects. There is no death. There's no major um, adverse reactions. Now we are hearing reports out of the UK, a couple of people had some anaphylactic reaction, and so they are advising if people have a history of anaphylaxis that they need to really think about whether they're going to get this vaccine because that is a possibility. Unfortunately, with anything you inject in your body, you could have the potential of anaphylaxis, which is an allergic reaction. Um, and those folks that tend to have anaphylaxis to something are more likely to have it to other things. Um, and that's just that's just one of those things that we know can happen. But none of those people had any serious uh, long-term effects from that. They ended up getting treated for the anaphylaxis and did okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, going through all of this, the one bad thing about the mRNA vaccines that I don't know if a lot of people have talked about is that these vaccines are new technology and unfortunately, they require very cold uh, temperatures to be able to transport them and keep them. Uh, and it it's, uh, let me pull up the data here because uh, I had the exact amount of how cold it had to be. But they have to be uh, negative 70 to transport them. And then, and then once you reconstitute them, they have to be at negative two to negative eight for up to five days. So this is a problem because a negative 70 freezer is a very difficult thing to come by. And a lot of places don't have it. So your, your primary care doctors, your CVS pharmacies, they don't have that. And that is gonna make it a little bit difficult to get it to the general public. Most of your hospitals will probably have something like that or your health department. Um, we'll have a freezer for that. So that's one of the reasons healthcare systems are going to get this first. That and we're at higher risk in healthcare. Uh, but it is going to make it a logistically difficult to deal with. And there is that possibility if you don't keep it at that lower temperature that that vaccine could degrade, which would then um, reduce the effectiveness of the vaccine. So uh, just a thing that is a little bit different than the ones that they're doing, the more traditional vaccines that we're seeing from like China and Russia, those don't require those low temperatures. Um, so they make them a little bit better for countries that don't have access to these low freezers, um, but they're, like I said, not as effective. There is, uh, I believe in the Madeira vaccine, Mon Madeira, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, they're figuring out a way to be able to transport it at a little higher temperature. Um, and I wonder if they're going to go back and do that with the Pfizer vaccine. So we'll find out. So... Back to the question of me getting the vaccine and do I feel comfortable and everything. Yes, I have looked at the data. I feel very comfortable. I have gotten a lot of vaccines. I'm, I'm, I'm a big uh, proponent of vaccines. I am in healthcare. Uh, I feel like fundamentally with the knowledge that I know that I am a firm believer in vaccines. And I know for some folks uh, are hesitant about vaccines and, um, you know, all I can know is that I look at the data and for me, it makes a lot of sense to get the vaccine. Um, I'm at high risk because I work in healthcare. So the risk benefit profile is there. Uh, we don't know the data on small children yet or under 16. Uh, and it's gonna be interesting. I think they're gonna start a trial for these slightly younger children. We also don't know about in pregnant patients. Um, they didn't do any studies on this. So there are big gaps of populations that we don't know whether we can give this vaccine to. The other thing we don't know is how long our immunity lasts. And we still don't know natural immunity from COVID, how long that lasts. And that's a big question that I think 
we're just not going to know for a while. But I think now that they've given this vaccine and they're starting to follow people out from the trials, we'll have a better idea. We'll also hopefully have a better idea of people that have been infected and we follow them out further on their antibodies as well. I had a question on one of my last videos where uh, people asked, okay, I had COVID recently. Should I get the vaccine? Um, and the thing is, is what they're advising is if you've had COVID within 90 days, you really shouldn't go ahead and get the vaccine. You've got, we believe, immunity at least for that first 90 days. But after that, they're really advising you're like anybody else and should go get the vaccine. Um, and I, I think that's something to note. Like, obviously, I don't, I don't, I haven't had COVID recently, so I'm going to go get the vaccine. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically my thoughts on it. I am a big fan of vaccines. I'm going to go get it. I think this is safe. I want you guys to feel comfortable with it. Know that by the time it reaches the general population, all of your healthcare workers and your other folks are going to have taken it first. Um, and and we're not going to give you something that we ourselves are not comfortable with. So obviously, um you know, hopefully that will help folks that are on the fence. And I know I have a lot of friends and family members and people that are on the fence. And this is, a, you know, a new thing. This vaccine was developed very quickly. Um, and so that's that's a hard thing to wrap our minds around the, uh, the safety of it. But I do feel very comfortable with this. Um, and even I was a little leery in the beginning until I saw the data and the, the studies. So um, anyway, that's it guys. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. I don't know with what video, but if you guys have any questions, you can leave them down below. Um, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. As I said, I am a ER doctor. I was a microbiologist back in the day. So vaccines are in my wheelhouse, but I'm not like an Im immunology expert. Um, so I do have to look up a little bit of the data when I go over it, but all right guys, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye.